Welcome to Employment Law This Week. I'm George Whipple. President Biden made headlines last week with his six-pronged action plan to fight COVID-19. The plan includes new mandates for health care and federal workers, as well as a requirement for employers with 100 or more employees to mandate vaccines or test employees weekly. Epstein Becker Green's Kate Rigby and Adam Tomiak are here to tell us more. There's one element of this six part plan that has significant implications for employers, and that's what President Biden is referring to as vaccinating the unvaccinated. The impact on private employers will be quite broad and will depend in part on uh, the answers to numerous questions that employers have at this point after President Biden's announcement. Um, for instance, which employees will be counted toward the 100 uh, plus employee threshold. OSHA indicated late last week in private sector stakeholder meetings that it'll be counted at the company level versus, uh, for instance, at a work site or location level. There's also questions about which employees will be covered, uh, full-time, part-time, seasonal, or even contractors. OSHA will be the federal agency responsible for enforcing the ETS for private employers with 100 or more employees. And covered employers who do not comply with the standard could face deep penalties up to $14,000 per violation. OSHA typically enforces such standards by inspecting workplaces, especially um, after OSHA received complaints of potential unsafe working conditions. Um, but the forthcoming ETS will likely uh, detail OSHA's enforcement mechanisms and the potential documentation and our reporting requirements for employers. Several states have already indicated that they plan to challenge Biden's mandate. They've indicated they will challenge it on a constitutional basis, but it's also likely that organizations and state may challenge it, um, claiming that OSHA does not have uh, the authority to um, issue this ETS. In order to issue an ETS, OSHA must first determine that employees are exposed to a grave danger um, in the workplace and that the measures in the ETS are necessary to protect the employees from those dangers. State governors and other elected officials have already vo voiced their opposition to the plan and many have signaled their intent to file legal action. That said, employers who were already exploring vaccine mandates may view this as an opportunity where they were interested in exploring this next step, but were uncertain whether they had the authority to do so or whether doing so would expose them to legal challenges, employee relations issues, or reputational risk. Now they'll have greater clarity about what they can do and in fact now have to do. But some uncertainty remains, including who will pay for testing, whether these requirements will apply to individuals who work entirely remotely, and what the penalties will be for non-compliance, as well as how to address accommodation requests, including for sincerely held religious beliefs or disabilities. By September 24th, we'll receive guidance as it relates to federal employees and contractors, and specifically by October 15th, all federal contracts will be amended to include a provision that includes this requirement. For healthcare workers, CMS will issue an interim final rule sometime in October, and for employers with 100 or more employees, OSHA will issue Emergency Temporary Standards, or ETS, in the coming weeks. We expect that the White House intends to keep momentum, even without definitive clarity on the timing, uh, so employers should begin immediately to consider how they may be in scope for these requirements and what they'll do to comply. Thanks, Kate and Adam, and thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next time.